Hi everyone, this is lesson 32 and it's a review on polygons. As you move forward in your math and um, prepare to do work with further work with geometry and shapes and lines and angles and, and things like that, it's really important that you have a strong foundational understanding of polygons and, and just shapes in general. So this is really important work. We have um, quite a few different learning targets for today. Um, I did notice there's a typo here, so just, just pretend you don't see that. Um, decide if a figure is a polygon. So first of all, just understanding what by definition is a polygon. And then from there, classifying polygons by the number of their sides, drawing different kinds of polygons, identifying and drawing congruent figures. This word right here, congruent, is very important in math. And then identifying similar figures. So really out of this lesson today, these are probably the biggest things that I need you to really understand. The rest, the information about polygons and talking about the different sides and what they're called, you've definitely seen that before. And so that will be a review, but really understanding um, what does it mean when figures are congruent? What does it mean when they are similar? And, um, and knowing what that means. So, um, I'm going to skim past this page of notes. This again, these are just notes. This is straight from the book. This is a, a review of like a, a homework, a section of homework. Um, I will attach these notes in Google Classroom. You can take time to look at them more closely, but just this is just reviewing um, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, oblique segments, um, intersecting lines that are perpendicular, obtuse angle, definitely stuff you've seen before. So again, here's a little bit more of vocabulary. When we're breaking down information about a polygon, um, the plane, uh, when we're talking about a polygon, is the flat surface. A definition of a polygon, this should have come first. Any flat shape formed by line segments that close in an area. So um, really, really important. Polygons are always enclosed. They never have open spots. And then um, they're formed by lines. So circles don't apply. They're formed by lines. Curved lines don't apply. We're talking about straight line segments. Um, here are some examples of polygons right here. These are all formed by straight lines. These right here are examples of um, shapes that are not polygons. So um, this one, of course, is not a polygon because it is not enclosed. This one is not a polygon because it has a curved line right here. And this cube right here, not a polygon because it's 3D. Um, we talked here uh, flat surface. We're talking about a plane, flat surface, 2D, 2D, <laughs> not 3D. More uh, important vocabulary sides are the line segments that form polygons. Vertex, or if there's more than one, vertices are where two sides meet. So basically a point. Um, this is slightly irrelevant and beyond fifth and sixth grade math, but there's this really, really cool formula. I just got an idea right now while I was filming that I might turn into a math lab, but there's this really cool formula called Euler's formula of polyhedra. And um, it's just really like working with different types of polygons and, and, and students like investigating, is there a relationship? Is there a constant relationship between number of sides, vertices, all of that, like, um, and I think there's one more thing. Um, but is is there a consistent formula? And um, through kind of discovering that and looking at all of these different polygons here, you start to notice, yes, there is a consistent formula. So more to come. That's really cool. Anyway, here's a review of different types of polygons, um, starting with number of sides being three with a triangle, all the way up to 12 with a dodecagon. I will say it bothers me slightly that nine isn't in here. And I don't remember now off the top of my head what a nine-sided polygon would be called. I think it's nonagon. I'm going to be embarrassed if this is on video out for the world to see and I got that wrong. But it is what it is. Um, I think it's nonagon. But some of these you'll be very uh, familiar with, very comfortable with. You've seen them for a long time. Literally, I was playing pattern blocks on the floor with my boys last night. Um, my boys are are three and four. And we were talking about, um, not, we didn't say quad, quadrilateral, but we were talking about trapezoids and um, hexagons. You know, we're doing the little yellow hexagon pattern blocks. So even they know those, you should definitely be comfortable with knowing those by now. These are a little bit more rare, the decagon. Again, this prefix of deca 
always associate with the number 10 and dodeca 12. Okay. Um, a couple of things over here, though, I found slightly valuable. This is, uh, these are different types of quadrilaterals. So by definition, a quadrilateral is any polygon that has four sides, but those can look so different and understanding. I mean, sometimes, um, if time allows in fifth grade, I break that down into an entirely different math lesson. It's just classifying quadrilaterals because there are so many kinds. Um, here are a few that you should know. So obviously a square and a rectangle, these are a little bit more rare. They aren't typed in here, probably to challenge you to know them yourself. Take a second to take a look at these pictures and see if you can identify those. This right here, anytime you see something that looks like this, this is a parallelogram. It has two, it has exactly two sets of parallel lines, vertical and horizontal parallelogram. This one right here is what we were talking about last night, my boys and I, when we were doing the pattern blocks on the floor. If you remember pattern blocks, this is the one that's always red. And you know, if you like put two together, they made the yellow hexagon. This is a trapezoid. So trapezoids look like this. Um, and then this one right here, forever and ever and ever, we call this a diamond. And that's not wrong, but a more advanced mathematical term for this is called a rhombus. You should call this a rhombus. When I was a kindergarten teacher and we did intake assessments, um, we made special note on students who called this a rhombus. Okay, a uh, concave polygon is one that has a cave entrance, I suppose, like this. Let's take a look at this example. This figure is an example of a quadrilateral. It's a square, yes. Which of these shapes is not a quadrilateral? So, by definition, a quadrilateral, four sides. You should be able to see right off, right off the bat, right there, this hexagon right here doesn't fall into that category. It has six sides. So, which one is not? C. I should, I should write that in. Here we go. Example two. Which of these shapes is not a polygon? So remembering back to the definition of polygons, it's, um, it's a, a shape that's formed by straight lines connecting um, and enclosing a space. So which one is not a polygon? That is a polygon. That is a polygon. That is a polygon. A circle is not. No straight lines. Name each of these polygons. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right here because I myself need to be able to zoom in, count the number of sides, and then identify what I would call these polygons. If um, See, I when I pause the video, I have the ability to go back and look at that notes page if I need to, and I know you don't have that ability in front of you, but do your best to guess. If you can't remember the name of the polygon that goes with that number of sides, at least jot down the number of sides, and then we'll talk about what, you, what each one is called in a moment. So I apologize um, for my terrible handwriting. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do with this fat stylus pen. But um, just to break this down, I've counted the number of sides for each of these letters. For A here, um, I have counted six sides. And I know that a polygon with six sides is called a hexagon. I always associate that X, the hexagon with six. Um, B, I counted up the sides in this shape that looks like an E. And I got 12 sides. and by definition, a polygon with 12 sides is a dodecagon. And then this last one that looks like a T, I counted up the sides here. I got eight sides and I know a polygon with eight sides is called an octagon. So Okay, so this is important. We're talking about congruent and similar shapes here. Uh, by definition, congruent means they're having the same shape and same size. So congruent, same shape, and same size, okay? When we're talking about two different objects or pictures or shapes. Similar, oops, similar means they're having the same shape but not necessarily the same size. So <laughs> when I think about that, like I think about my boys. Um, they're, they're like same shape, but different sizes, like one size off. One's a little bit smaller than the other. They look like twins, I swear, but one's one year younger than the other. So uh, similar, uh, pretty much the same, but different size. So here's an example um, of two triangles that are similar. You can see that they are the exact same shape, 
Okay, so we're talking about these two right triangles here, um, but just different sizes. One is smaller than the other, or one is larger than the other. Which two rectangles, which two rectangles below are congruent? So remember that the, by definition, congruent means same shape, same size. Um, again, I was going to tell you to pause your video, but I don't necessarily think you need to. Remember, um, they can be they can be rotated. Um, doesn't say anything in the definition about how they're positioned. So they can look a little different because they're rotated. That doesn't necessarily affect the shape and size. So as I'm looking here, I notice right away this, this rectangle B is very small. There are, I'm looking for something same shape, same size. There's nothing else that size. I'm going to cross it off. Oh, guess what? I got rid of my pen here. One moment, sorry. Crossing that one off. Um, this one, you know, in, in relation to this other one over here, D is very large. And if I'm looking for something same shape, same size, nothing else on this lineup is quite that large. I'm going to eliminate that one. Eliminating options when you're given multiple choice is a really, really good test taking strategy. Eliminate options and work with what you've got left. Um, ease of stress and it's just a good test taking strategy. So as I'm looking at these, to be honest, even these don't look congruent really to me. This one looks a little bit fatter, but um, if I were to rotate this on the side or rotate this one on its side, I can see how these two would be congruent. So um, in the end, I'm going to say A and C are congruent. Last example here, we're working with some triangles. Which two triangles below are similar? So remember, when we're talking about objects that are similar, they don't necessarily need to be the same size. They do need to be the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. One can be smaller or larger. So I'm going to start by eliminating anything I can eliminate. And I notice um, this one at first. I've got an obtuse triangle, meaning that the angle inside the triangle, there's an, there's an angle that's obtuse and no other triangle has that. So let's get rid of C. There's no other obtuse triangle. Nothing else can be similar to that if no other triangles have an obtuse angle. Now um, let's take a look at this one over here, A. We have a right triangle, meaning that the angle within it is a right angle or a 90 degree angle. And again, just like with C, none of the other triangles on this lineup have a right angle. So nothing else can be similar to that. Forget you. Okay, now we're left with two options. By default, of course, we would assume that these two would be the ones that are similar, but let's just really take a close look at them and make sure that they kind of fit that, those guidelines. Similar means sh same shape, different size. So we have just an acute triangle. Um, here we go, same thing, yes. Same shape, this one's a little bit bigger. I like it. Okay, perfect. So those would be our answer, B and D. That's it for your examples for today. Again, remembering some of your biggest takeaways from today really should just be about what does it mean when shapes are congruent? What does it mean when they're similar? I know that for sure you're tested on that as you move forward and just really important um, vocabulary to know and understand as you